Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Tom Pierce, and this is The Scale Earth. Hey guys, welcome back to the Scale Nerd again. So most of my friends and family and my Scale Nerd fans, they know that I'm into scale modeling, building kits and painting them, even like RC, planes, trucks, cars, you name it, any type of model I'm into. Uh, but I really like assembling the kits and painting them, maybe doing dioramas. This video is gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna talk about something that I've never done before. I've always wanted to get into it and that's clay modeling. So, as I came to find out, there are a lot of different types of clays and they're all targeted different types of applications and different modeler preferences. I decided I wanted something that would give me plenty of time to work with it. I didn't want it to dry too fast, but I didn't want to go through mold making from the clay. I wanted something that I could either air dry or bake dry. And ultimately I came up uh, with Super Sculpey. Super Sculpey is a great polymer based clay that gives you plenty of working time. It never really dries until you want it to, in which case you just throw it in the oven, bake it, and you get a nice hard finish. Because ultimately, I'm not leaving my scale roots. I do want to get this thing nice and hard so I can paint it and uh, do what I would normally do with any other scale model. It's just instead of relying on someone else's sculpted figure, I'll be sculpting the figure myself. So I don't want to get in too deep into all the different types of clay. This isn't an evaluation or review on clay. Uh, there are plenty of YouTube videos out there that take you through all the different types of clay and the different advantages and disadvantages of each one. But we're going to look at Super Sculpey today and my first sculpture. Let's take a look. So the first step of sculpting a figure is going to be to create an armature base underneath so that you can minimize the amount of clay that you have to put on the fixture. Uh, saves money and speeds up drying time. So I use a wooden board, a piece of plywood in this case, and mount some uh, heavy wiring in it and then wrap it with aluminum foil to bulk out the shape. Then get out my Super Sculpey, get ready to uh, start working the clay in, but before that I'll take a look at the tools I've got here. Uh, this is an assortment beginner's set of tools, uh, various shapes and materials. But the missing tool was what's called a rake tool. So I made my own rake tool by taking an old paintbrush and some guitar strings and uh, loop the guitar strings over the end of the paintbrush, slide some brass tubing over there, a little epoxy glue, and you got a nice little rake tool that helps you to really smooth out and it's kind of like sanding clay. Uh, I have two different sizes and two different string weights on each end. So now it's time to go ahead and start applying the Super Sculpey clay. Uh, just squeeze off some thin layers of it and just start enveloping or wrapping the entire armature with the clay to get it all sealed in with, with clay. No need for tools yet at this point. You're just using your hands because you're just covering everything up with clay not really giving it any types of shape. But once you get it all covered, you're gonna to continue to add more layers and more layers to fill out areas that start forming the shape of the figure. And things are starting to look like a humanoid being here now. Now I've started to get some basic anatomy put together and start using the rake tool to shape in that anatomy around the head and the, and the body. I kind of move around different areas instead of spending too much time on one area. Uh, once I get basic fundamental anatomy down, now I'm going to start building just a little bit of uh, detail that differentiates this character from a normal human to an alien character. 
can't stress how important this rake tool is. It works very well in taking out large chunks of clay as well as smoothing out clay. So here I'm using a roller to cut uh, out some strips of thin uh, layers of clay to create the collar on his jacket. Now I'm starting to work on the uniform itself and to uh, give it uh, a little bit of form and shape like uh, a jacket, I need to add and take away folds. So you can see laying little tiny beads um, and, and strips of clay in the right areas and then uh, blending them in and carving away. You just gradually build up the fold structure to the jacket. And the, becomes a lot more realistic looking. Photographic reference is really important at this point, especially if you're doing fan art like this and not making something up out of your head. Uh, if it has something that it's supposed to look like, then having a lot of good photographs of the subject is very helpful, different angles and, and so forth. Um, obviously, it doesn't have to match exactly, but the better reference I have, the better my uh, piece of art is going to come out to be. Now I'm starting to define the different sections of the jacket that have different materials on them. So doing what's called a pillow embossing technique here where um, you create creases and, and raised areas to define different sections of the jacket that may be different materials or different textures. Sometimes small uh, pieces protruding out, like the fingers here, need a little bit of extra support so I can stick uh, little pieces of wire into the clay to support that clay. Otherwise, it just keeps kind of bending and falling off of there. It really helps to 
solidify the fingers and keep them stable as you're working on them. Moving on to detailing the head, uh, he's got different kind of like layers of uh, anatomy to his head. So to define those layers, I use long, thin, uh, rolled out beads of clay, uh, define the different sections in the areas and then blend them in that way. So you can kind of create different levels and heights and shapes uh, by blending the clay in there and then continue to modify uh, the contours with the rake tool and the silicone tip brush. One of the most difficult parts of a step like this is symmetry. You need to make sure that you're getting the left and right sides symmetrical in shape, size, height on the head. So you just constantly have to keep going back and forth from the left to the right side and checking all your symmetry so you don't end up with somebody with a, a figure that's got lopsided uh, cranial or facial features. So working in nostrils, uh, using the same techniques that I did for defining the different layers of his head anatomy. Saru is a Kelpian, is the race of alien that he is on the Star Trek series, and these Kelpians have quite elaborate ears, so this was a very difficult uh, part of the sculpting process, getting there and trying to match their unique anatomy of, of their ears and keep them symmetrical and in proportion to the head. Various silicone tip brushes are invaluable at this stage in trying to get into the small detail and smooth uh, them out and blend, blend these different structures in. So I'm using plastic beads for the eyes. So I cut out a hole for the eyes and then take a plastic bead the appropriate size and shove it in there. This was a big risk because I didn't think about it when I started uh, to use the beads for the eyes uh, that this clay needs to be baked. So putting plastic in an oven at 275 degrees, high risk of melting the plastic. And I ju it just didn't hit me until it was kind of too late. So I went ahead and followed through with them. Uh, I think something like glass beads or marbles are gonna be a lot better 
Uh, using a spherical hard bead like this is a lot easier than trying to create an eyeball out of clay because you just don't get that really smooth, hard uh, spherical shape. And it's very risky that you constantly be denning the eyeball in the, as you work with the clay. But uh, I went ahead and put the eyes in there and built the eyelids around it. And ultimately, when I baked the clay, I just didn't follow the manufacturer's instructions. So I didn't use the as high heat uh, to try to salvage the eyes and keep them from melting. So it looks like a Kelpian now. Uh, I think uh, Saru's coming along pretty good. Basic shape uh, is coming along just nice. Now I wanted to do the Starfleet communicator badge that goes on their uniform. Uh, very small and has really intricate detail. So instead of the uh, super sculpty clay, I'm using Milliput. Milliput is a two-part epoxy putty. So you take a couple little beads of each part, mix them together, and lay them out on the plastic plate and start cutting and shaping the communicator badge. Um, this putty will stay workable for several hours. and Overnight it dries to super hard finish, but uh, after about an hour or two, it stiffens up enough that you can actually go in and start creating some really intricate detail. Now with the sculpture basically complete, or close to complete, use alcohol or rubbing alcohol to brush over the entire sculpture. This removes fingerprints, scrape marks, small dents, um, marks from the rake tool, and just gives it a very, very smooth, kind of glossy finish to the entire, um, the entire clay surface area, which um, is very, very helpful when you do the fine final detailing. So test fitting the communicator badge. Now that the alcohol is fully dried and evaporated away, I'm going in and doing the, the last final details, which is going to be um, skin texturing, folds and wrinkles and, and things like that, that actually um, make his skin anatomy come forth separate from the rest of the figure. Now I want to add a little bit more of a cloth texture to his jacket. So I'm putting the alcohol back on there and then going over the entire jacket with a sponge that kind of gives it a stippled matte finish, much more like cloth. And then I'm making a little tool out of styrene two plastic. Uh, it's a stamping tool that allows me to make little pillowed spheres or circles uh, on this uh, kind of quilted area of his jacket. Then smooth them out with a regular paintbrush. Here I'm gonna take wire, uh, it's a three wire uh, lead from a, a servo and press that into the clay and it creates kind of this almost a corduroy looking effect on the patches on his elbows. This is a little demonstration I'm doing here to show the technique I use to pillow emboss the shoulder pads. So using a wire depressing into the clay and the silicone tool and a brush, you're able to create these, um, this piping on the shoulders that's kind of like a, a, a pillow emboss type effect that goes across his shoulders and down the sides of his jacket. So there we go. We're all finished with the sculpture and it's ready to bake. So now we place this on a baking mat and lay it on a cooking sheet and put it in the oven. The manufacturer's instructions call for 275 degrees for 15 minutes for every quarter inch of clay. Because of the plastic eyes, I didn't do 275, I went down to 250 for 40 minutes, and then another hour at 200 degrees. I didn't have any problems with the eyes that way. So now we're building the base. 
So I took the plywood base that I sculpted Saru on and cut, a, cut it out in the circle with a um, saw and then cut up some sheets of styrene sheeting stock and epoxied that over the entire surface to give it a really smooth surface. Using a little bit more plastic half round stock, I was able to add a little bit more shape and detail to the base to make it more interesting looking. There we go, it's all finished and ready to paint. Let's take a look at the character. Everybody, this project's complete. My clay sculpture of Saru, a character from the Star Trek Discovery series, is done. Sculpted out of Super Sculpey clay, which I really like working with, uh, and baked and now primed, I'm ready to go ahead and start painting him up to bring him to life. So come back and check out my next video on painting Saru, where I'll cover uh, all the painting steps that I take uh, to paint the figure in the base. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you come back and check out my future videos or any of my other projects, whether it be uh, sculpting, painting, uh, scale modeling, diorama building, all that kind of stuff. So I have a Facebook page, The Scale Nerd on Facebook, and then my YouTube channel, The Scale Nerd YouTube channel. I encourage you to come check them out if you haven't already. Give me likes and subscribes and shares so I can get more followers and uh, just expand on this community that we have in scale modeling and sculpting and painting. So I hope you enjoyed the project. Uh, maybe it inspired you to tackle something like this yourself. Who knows what I'm gonna do next, but until the next time, you better stay tuned because it probably is gonna be something pretty cool. So until then, safe and happy modeling, everybody. Bye now.